this week, COVID in India taking it down. I mean, India said, can I order some food? And nature said, tikka masala COVID for India. Uh, the whole country's collapsing over COVID. Joe Rogan under fire for uh, saying on his episode to a noted scholar from Legion of Skanks, David Smith, that uh, young people should not get the vaccine. They should fight, fight COVID with jujitsu and vitamin X. And some zinc does the trick. Um, in other news, there's also a shooting in Ka North Carolina where they are waiting for the body cam footage to release. It's like they're waiting for a new Jay-Z album to drop. Um, Caitlyn Jenner's running for president. Randy Quaid is running for governor. Uh, I'm calling my publicist and I will be running for the governor and president of Crete, Greece. It's a great move. Elliot Page, formerly known as Ellen Page. Don't know if she's added a dick to the pussy yet, but she will be being interviewed by Oprah. In other news, Giuliani's apartment's being raided. What else is new? This is Long Days. What's to do us? Wasta Dallas, welcome to Long Days. Wow, do we got a barn burner for you this week, brother? I am jet lagged, and that's just because I did Whitney Cummings podcast. I mean, talk about a time difference. We did five hours on Whitney Cummings podcast. Who knows what the name of it is? Uh, she has a name, but I just call it Whitney because I can't get over the fact that her and her co star, Chris D'Elia, don't talk anymore. I can't get over the fact that that show got canceled. So whatever your podcast name is, Whitney, I'm just going to call it Whitney. Did it have a theme song? Whitney. Whitney. Here's my best friend, Chris D'Elia. His father grew up a producer. So he passed down the talent for the entertainment business, also for fucking young chicks. Which you used to be able to get away with in Hollywood. And every episode, I'm going to do a Broadway play. Now, how great a Broadway play would that be? Where some producer goes, listen, son, I'm going to tell you all about the business. And also, my grandfather passed this down to me, and I'm passing it down to you. Okay? Here's how you pick up 16-year-olds. <laughs> It's national news. What do you want me to do? I was never friends with the guy. So as Tim Dillon says, I got to do my job. <laughs> so yeah, I am jet lagged from Los Angeles. For, uh, I spent about 12 or 14 hours there. I'm just kidding. All that was a joke. I didn't mean a word of it. It's, you know, what are you, you going to do? Yeah, it's just in the news. I can't help it. You know, what are you going to do? So, um, and then I was in Austin again before that, um, I saw, I saw my good friend Joe Rogan. I love Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan is obviously under fire because he was sitting down with, uh, I mean, if you were going to put together, I love all three of them. They're friends of mine. Um, but if you were going to put together, you could put that Legion of Skanks together, the podcast Legion of Skanks, very popular, very funny podcast with Jay Okerson, Louis J. Gomez, the intellectual Puerto Rican rattlesnake, and Dave Smith's, everyone's favorite uh, college dropout libertarian. And so if you were going to create a podcast, like uh, pretty soon there's going to be like a producer, like there was the Mickey Mouse Club. What was his name? The fat guy who you know was diddling boys. Perlman. Perlman. Lou Perlman. You telling me Lou Perlman didn't explore Ryan Goosling's asshole on a few occasions? You telling me he didn't throw Justin uh, Timberlake in a backpack and make him suck his lollipop for pop stardom? You get nothing coming. Because uh, why get into the business? There he is. Wasn't he caught for something too? Here's the deal. If you're a male camp counselor or you're a boy band uh, producer who puts them together, there is about a 57 to 76% chance that you are sexually attracted to minors. I'm just throwing it out there because why are you a camp counselor? What grown man wants to be around kids that aren't his own? Okay? Goosling. That's how I pronounce it. You're wrong. It was Rita Perlman. I don't know what you're talking about, Ricky, B takes, MKE. Make your screen names funnier because we're playing Russian roulette down there. 
And I don't want, I want to read funny names. Oh, baby, sucking farts from the little boys. Exactly. That's what Lou Pearlman liked to do. Bring the heat. Bring the heat, long haulers. Bring the fucking heat. For the dollars those guys make, Pearlman, those guys like Pearlman can have his way with my firstborn. So there you go. That is a good point. If he's going to make that kid a star and provide that type of money, maybe you look the other way when Pearlman says, can I take him on a date to Chuck E. Cheese? Who knows? Who knows? But uh, so Joe Rogan came under fire because I was saying if you be pretty soon, there's going to be like producers who put together podcasts the way they put together boy bands. Right. So there's going to be a guy being like, okay, we need one intellectual we need one, we need one like kind of like insane clown posse kind of heavy metal kind of funny one. That's the J one, right? And then we're gonna need a, we need one dangerous one. If you think about Legion of Skanks, they are new kids on the block, right? <laughs> like Louis J. Gomez, <laughs> Louis J. Gomez is Donnie Wahlberg, right? Donnie Wahlberg was the one with the leather jacket. Like, I'm from the other side of the tracks, fucking car. You know, and he went from Boston. It's like, I'm from the other side of fucking tracks. And let alone, you haven't even met my fucking brother. You haven't met my fucking brother because he likes to punch Taiwanese people and hate crimes. By the way, Marky Mark, yeah, my, Marky Mike. Marky Mark, Catholicism is not going to protect you from the fact that Google exists because you should have been tweeting respect Asian lives every day because one Asian is blind because of you. Do you guys remember that? You're too young to know that Marky Mark punched an Asian kid. Yeah, he punched an Asian guy in a hate crime when he was young and the guy went blind. And then he created the song, Hanging Tough. What was his song? Come on, come on. Feel it, feel it. The funky part. Yeah, feel this punch in the eye that made you go blind. Feel this hate crime. Come on, come on. Feel this hate crime. Right in your face, Asian man. Because you're not fucking from around here. This is fucking Boston. You get the fuck out of here. If you're a little fucking darker than my fucking white converse, I want you fucking out of here, you cocksucker. So if you think about it, Legion of Skanks is kind of like the podcast version of New Kids on the Block. You could put them together the same way New Kids on the Block were put together by New Edition's manager who wanted to make money. Because New Edition's manager was like, yo, New Edition, these guys are all black and talented, but yo, White girls aren't allowed to listen to them because of their fathers. So let me just take this model and use it and put together white guys that emulate new edition and make some money because they can hang the poster and say, Daddy, oh my God, take me to see J.C. Sajez or whatever his fucking name is. Take me to see Toby Maguire. I don't know what their names are because I'm not a gay kid. I was listening to Slick Rick. You hurt? Doing the running man. I was doing the running man. You hurt? I had an African man dying doing a kid and play kickstep. I grew up with hip hop, you know what I mean? Because I like girls. Girls. I don't like boys. So yeah, some producer would go, okay, we need like, we need like the funny fat one who's kind of like, who kind of is like, you know, looks like he's into like Slipknot. And then we need the dangerous one. We need the Donnie Wahlberg, the one who's from the other side of the tracks. His parents got killed in a knife fight, you know? So that's true. And then we need the smart one, the nerdy one, okay? The one with glasses, the Lisa Loeb guy, the one who fucking talks about government policy and shit like that. We throw them all together, brought to you by the And that is Legion of Skanks, baby. My boys. So Joe Rogan was on the podcast with, with our good friend, uh, very funny, hilarious, Dave Smith. And um, Joe Rogan came under fire because he said, he would tell, he, he thinks a lot of people should get the vaccine. So that was good that he said that. And then he said, um, you know, but I would tell very young, healthy people to not get it. Um, what people don't know is Joe Rogan in his spare time, not only does he um, sell on it pills and dumbbells, <laughs> he's also been doing a lot of side research on the vaccine for MIT, amongst other places, I think Cambridge as well. And I think he's down there at the University of Austin, also playing with some of the va uh, variants so he can figure out uh, different sequences of DNA and smart words, smart words, smart words, and smart words that eggheads who are born eggheads can understand. So he's trying to actually, he's working on sequencing and DNA variants and compositoriness of sort of the uh, nucleus of the variant of uh, uh, the strand um, in, the, um, in the vaccine and the vaccinization process and things like that. 
So a lot of people don't know that when he said that uh, you all you need is uh, to eat your spinach, brother. I mean, couldn't that have been the same advice from Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan, all right, brother, all you got to do is take your vitamins and uh, make sure you drink an egg raw, brother, and don't let that cocaine run wild on you. Don't let that COVID-19 run wild on you. I am born American, USA. What was the song it came out to? Real American Hero. Born down in a dead man's... No, no. it's Bruce. Uh, uh, real American Hero. I'm a real American hero. COVID ain't get me with these pythons. Take your vitamins, brother. Don't let COVID take you. That's the real vaccine. That's Florida's vaccine, brother. Yeah. Don't take no Chinese vaccine. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, what, pe- what people don't know is uh, what happened was Joe Rogan was doing a character piece, okay? He was saying, look, imagine I was fucking Hulk Hogan, and I was fucking Donnie, and I was doing a fucking character. If he just said a uh, uh, character piece after that, then Joe Rogan, <laughs> Joe Rogan experience, which sign behind it uh, is of an alien craft underneath the words Joe Rogan experience, um, uh, had a, prompted an official response from the White House, Today, So that just lets you know that the state of media, when Joe Rogan's opinion on what he wants to do um, can can like sway elections or actually sway populations from getting or not getting the vaccine. That's not Joe Rogan's fault. This is a failure of public education. OK, um, and I've said it many times. Aristotle warned and America hasn't heeded the future of any civilization, he said, um, or empire, however you want to put it, is dependent on public education. No matter how capitalist you are or libertarian, I love you guys. You guys, like it's like having a fucking freshman conversation with someone who loves Ayn Rand. Um, he believed, I don't think anyone can deny that public education needs to be well-funded, have a high standard, et cetera. Look at Finland, look at Scandinavia, et cetera, et cetera. So no matter how much of a capitalist you are, you have to have public education. It needs to be strong. So people can be taught to think. They don't even teach logic to these kids. They don't teach philosophy. They just tell you to reach the, read The Catcher in the Rye and then the rest of it do online. They say, hey, read this book, The Catcher in the Rye, and then um, we'll have a multiple choice quiz that you can completely Google while you're at home online because of COVID. So our education is a failure. And that's why, um, maybe that's why he's become so influential for a lot of these things. But Joe Rogan's obviously the best. He's... um. He has all these intellectuals on, and I'm glad Joe Rogan exists because he's at least provided other thinkers on to push back against this wokeness, which is a fucking mind virus, as, as I've said, as Tim Dillon has said. Um, and it's really a, a problem. So at least he's given, um, he's put on some intellectuals and scientists and stuff that push that back. He's also, uh, you know, really embraced the new medium where he lets someone talk for four hours in this era where people are judging people for tweets and sound bites. People are not their tweets. Okay, uh, people are not their words. Okay, if I say I want to kill my wife, that doesn't mean you go, oh my God, Giannis is a murderer. Look at what he said. It's called context, people. Um, so, but that's what Joe Rogan's opinion is for whatever reason. Um, it's sad that he has to come under such fire for having an opinion. But again, he would be the, probably the first to tell you that he's not an expert. Um, he doesn't work at MIT, though that was sarcasm. Um, you know, he's an expert in jujitsu. He's an expert in MMA. He's an expert in comedy. He's an expert in podcasts. Um, he's, he's an expert in being able to kick you in the chest and, and do the same amount of damage COVID can to your lungs. Um, so you should know as an educated person, hey, let me do my own research. Let me listen to some experts who actually do work in the lab and who create uh, you know vaccines and work on manipulating viruses and understand pandemics, et cetera. Listen to them. I mean, it would almost be like a scientist coming in and- and, and, and having a podcast and going like, you know what? I think Dustin Poirier doesn't have a stand-up game. Okay? Of course, MMA people are going to be like, he's improved his stand-up game. He knocked out Conor McGregor. He, he, he went toe-to-toe with Max Holloway, who's considered maybe pound for pound one of the best boxers in MMA. And Poirier stood up and struck with them. Yeah, because that is someone who knows MMA. Okay? So just take it like that. Okay? Imagine a scientist talking about MMA. I think Joe Rogan might get, I, I have a few words to say about that as well. And that's why I think a few scientists were like, Joe, can we talk? Joe, can we talk? Can we talk? Do you remember Joan Rivers? Can we talk? She was a beast, maybe the goat. 
She used to rip those people apart in the dresses. She had straight dudes turning in so she could rip those people apart, even though her face looked like she was a panther. That's what happens when you do too much plastic surgery because Los Angeles is a sick place. You're a sick puppy, okay? Now, The Daily Show. Um, Once one of the most influential shows on television that was sort of a response uh, and was bred by Fox op-ed cable news shows um, that were heavily editorialized, of course, by Big Pop himself, who Colbert, uh, Stephen Colbert satirized. What's his name? He was sexual charges. Oh, uh, Bill O'Reilly? Bill, Bill, Bill Thompson. Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly. So this came up as a response to sort of Bill O'Reilly and his popularity. And The Daily Show used to crush it, and, and, and Jon Stewart was a towering intellectual as well as a absolutely gifted comedian and would also often, uh, you know, poke fun at things and, and be flawless at it, would show you the hypocrisy and things like that. And, you know, of course he leaned left and of course he exposed more of the right. But at the time, the right was really like fucking flying off the handle. Now the left, they've become the religious right, which is hilarious. It used to be because he was poking fun of the religious right, which was sort of like the fringe, uh, the fringe, element of the right that had hijacked the right and had the right pandering to them the way the left now has been hijacked by the religion of wokeness and it's a religion and they pandered to that fringe so culturally the right used to pander to the born again crowd right and now the left panders to the woke crowd they're both religions and it's flipped so now you got trevor noah from South Africa, good thing. You know, if you're gonna talk about the American culture and American politics, you're gonna wanna find someone who never lived in America to host your show, to really connect with the people, you know? So I'm glad they had to outsource for that. You're sending a really good message about how you really don't give a shit about the working people when even for your show's host, you fucking outsourced. I mean, do you think the working class in the Rust Belt is going to listen to Trevor Noah, who went to a Swiss private school? (laughs) I don't think apartheid was too hard on Trevor Noah, to be honest with you. Not to make light of apartheid, of course, because apartheid was horrible and a real thing, but I think Trevor Noah somehow escaped the hardships of that. I just have have a hunch I don't even know. Can you look up, did he go to a Swiss school? He's just got a face like he went to a Swiss school. I hope, if I'm right, that's going to be hilarious. But so Trevor Noah has, uh, he, he did a clip that's gone viral now where he's talked about the census. People on here are crazy. Haters for sure, peace. I don't know what's going on in the chat, but I like it. Um, I like the drama. We need a Yanni and Tim Dillon podcast. Go listen to the episode with me and Tim Dillon on his podcast and then his Patreon episode we did too. So Trevor Noah did a clip from his living room on the uh, socially distanced or whatever quarantine daily show where, uh, holy shit, I'm laughing my ass off. Love you too, Roger Carley. Roger's Carly. I don't know what her name is. Carly Rogers or something. She's a country singer in Nashville and she's really good. Even though I don't like country music, okay? But my wife does, okay? Country music is for people who are barely sliding into human. It's like a play at the plate and they can only understand lyrics that talk about cracking a beer, my jeans, my truck and getting mud on my boots. No, they're good love stories. I came home and the flag was down. So I put it back up because it fell down. So the wind is communist. The wind is communist and I fought for the flag. Don't let the wind blow her down. Put my feet in the sand on a vacation in Mexico because people listen to country music can only afford vacations at all-inclusives in Mexico, Cancun. And I put on Zac Brown band and I hiked up my jeans. And then my wife came home and I fucked her good. Then we went to church and we cracked an apple pie and a beer, but it was a Bud Light Lime. Cause I support America and I bought a Cadillac. It broke down 16 times but I still got it repaired and then I bought a Korean car and it drives much better and I don't tell my friends I keep it a secret because I support the president and by president I mean Donald Trump my lord and savior I really get sidetracked on this show once in a while Trevor Noah 
So he made a video about the census saying that New York has lost a congressional seat because they do the census and by population, wherever population increases or decreases, I don't know if you know, they add a congressional seat. Sorry, did I just say Senate? Congressional seat, they add based on population. So supposedly, apparently there's been unprecedented uh, fall off in population and uh, Trevor Noah was saying that's due to uh, low immigration, maybe because of the Trump administration, I guess that's the fucking implication and low birth rates for whatever other reason. I don't know, because fucking Marvin Gaye's dead. I don't know, maybe Keith Sweat needs to come back so we can make some more babies. I mean, you can't really fuck to some of the new techno or Drake, you know? r and is just not what it used to be. You know what I'm saying? You need Keith Sweat back. You need a little Joe to see. You need a little Joe to see the fucking stroke. You got the weekend. You got the week. The weekend's good, but weekend's too fast paced. I'm talking about bringing back Joe to see where they're in fucking, those guys are in Timbo's on they're, they're, they're in the desert with Timbos and the wind is blowing their, their, their wind blower open. They're wearing a fucking Lacoste jacket. It's just blowing. And all you see is a chain and a six pack. What happened to D'Angelo? He's fat now. He could get COVID. D'Angelo, please get vaccinated. <laughs> so what? So Ted Cruz and Trevor Noah went into a Twitter war because it's 2021 and we're at the end of an empire and you have a, uh, senators and millionaire, multimillionaire TV hosts going at it on Twitter because that's the schoolyard for adults. That's what Twitter is, the schoolyard for adults. It's pathetic, but also I love it. And um, basically, and, and he's right, Ted Cruz is implying, hey, people have fled those states, obviously because of COVID, uh, one of the reasons. And the other reason is because, yes, taxes, Taxes, and when I say taxes, I'm always I'm almost saying the state where they fled to, Texas, <laughs> Tejas, no state tax. Florida's populations increase, Texas's populations increase, North Carolina's populations increase, etc. Nashville's booming. It's not a coincidence that those are Republican red states, and obviously one of the main focus points of the Republican Party is low taxes and a lot of those states have zero state tax. So of course, after the pandemic, the economy's in need, the Fed is bumping everyone's taxes up and a lot of these states like New York and California are um, looking to fucking nail you over the head if you make $400 or more, which is not that much money in today's day. They're gonna fucking hammer the estate taxes, uh, stepped up basis. So people aren't stupid. And you see what happens when the chips are down. You see what happens. People care about their pocket because they're hypocrites and everyone votes their interests. So now these people who vote blue for the most part are fucking fleeing because they don't want to go broke rebuilding a country that was burned down by the same policies that allowed it to happen. So California supposedly is losing a congressperson and New York, I think is losing because uh, somewhere else is adding. And that, that place would be Texas, Texas. Isn't it funny how close Texas and Texas are? Texas, uh, make AOC bartend again. Thank you, Brendan Brown, 2095. <laughs> I have a debate today. Are humans more good than evil? You're a natural philosopher, Dylan Jones. You just found your hidden talent, my friend. Are, good, are people good or bad? I don't know. Ask my seventh-month-old daughter. <laughs> so guess what? So Trevor Noah, I mean, I love watching you in your show, uh, in your living room, pretend like you give a shit um, about what's going on in America. How great must it be to commentate on America and then just hop on a private jet and go back to South Africa and, uh, and eat whale blubber with whatever king is over there now? I don't know who's over there now. I love Trevor Noah, too. He's a very funny comedian, but... I mean, we got to get back to roasting both sides. You're a comedian. I love my expression. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a comedian. And I will continue to be until I die. There's too many Democrats and Republicans, and I believe that they're both important. They balance each other out, and they need to constantly vacillate and oscillate according to the times and according to context and need. Sometimes we need a little bit more left policy. Sometimes we need a, bit of, a little bit more of a tax break to stimulate the economy, okay? They're both necessary, and the tug of war that they employ and that they engage in is very important to a functioning economy and a functioning free democracy. Um, 
We don't need our comedians to be fucking pundits. We got enough of those. So comedians get back to breaking fucking everybody's balls or ovaries or lack thereof or whatever you identify as your ovaries. What are they going to go even further and be like, those aren't my ovaries. Those are my thumbs. My ovaries are right here. These are my tonsils. You call them tonsils. They're my ovaries, okay? That's why I drink a bag of sperm because I'm not a straight, I don't, I don't identify as cis. I don't identify as cis, so I don't deal with penises, but I will drink a bag of sperm from a gay non-binary person who only put it in the sperm bank with the understanding that it would impregnate my tonsils because I am a they and my tonsils are my ovaries because they identify as such. James Carlville just released a whole treatise on how wokeness is destroying the Democratic Party and how alarming it is that Donald Trump got like 70 plus million votes. You think? You think? You think it's weird that all these people are being homeschooled now because their teachers are making them repeat a Pledge of the Legion mantra to 127 genders? Going, hi, I need you to respect everyone's pronouns. Over here, her name is a sound, and they, I, she identifies as them. So now we're going to be teaching you bad grammar in order to not hurt anyone's feelings, no matter how crazy those feelings are. So we're off the reservation. Sorry, you can't even say that because I'm offending Native American people. Jesus Christ, there aren't any in the room. And by room, I mean country. <laughs> India's under fire with COVID. Holy shit, that place is on fire. India's uh, got another spike of COVID hitting them pretty hard. The thing about India, if you're COVID, you're gonna really love India, okay? I believe COVID went and got its citizenship of India because it was like, holy fuck, dude, what are we doing in Arkansas? COVID, COVID, the Brazilian strand came along and said, Fadji, Fadji, Ushmala, Jashmala, Jashmala, Portuguese, Chachamala, Fadji, Fadji. So the Brazilian strand sat down with the Wuhan strand, and the Wuhan said, the Wuhan, <laughs> the Wuhan strand said, Oh, how come we in Arkansas? <laughs> <laughs> and then the Japanese version said, Hoi, the Zaida, Oto, the Soto, Hoi, the no people here. And then the Jamaican brand said, Yeah, brethren, there's no people in Arkansas. <laughs> I love my job. How am I going to explain this to my daughter that daddy's at work? <laughs> so the Brazilian strand got together. Faji, Faji, Faji. I only know Faji because I watch Brazilian porn and I think that means fuck me. Faji, right? Faji. Faji. Oh, Setejia Faji. Portuguese sounds like you're speaking Spanish with marbles in your mouth or something. Faji, Dorchi, Marchi. So they got together and said, why are we doing it in Arkansas? There's no people. There's no people. There's no people. Let's go to India where there's too many people. <laughs> so, I mean, COVID is fucking jumping around like mono over there in a private school sorority. I mean, COVID is jumping around India like an SDT sorority at Hofstra. And if you, I mean, that should be funnier to you, Jesse, if you knew what mono is. Mono's a kissing, it's the kissing flu. Okay, whores get it. <laughs> Telling people he's a famous singer in the mamas and the papas. Yeah, tell people that. Tell people that. People hanging off on trains, yes. Yeah, it's really, um, you know, it's really easy to catch COVID in India when you got two guys walking down the street holding each other's pinky. I mean, COVID probably, COVID probably figure out, yo, we got to mutate so we get on people's pinkies, son. <laughs> the Kama Sutra, when you're fucking for too long, that's not good with COVID. You're giving yourself a higher chance of getting with COVID. So the Kama, because Indians are the sleepy, they, they have the Taekwondo of fucking. I mean, the Kama Sutra is the martial arts of making women come, dude. Like they should, why has yoga gotten big here but the Kama Sutra hasn't? Why is that? Why are Western people into stretching and joining cults in Washington? <laughs> I mean, remember the, you, you, you saw that documentary? You saw that documentary about the, the Bhagwan? I didn't watch it. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, yeah, white people joined some cult. 
Yeah, I mean, fucking white people will eat tikka masala. They'll join a yogi's cult all their stretch, but they won't take the Indian's advice on how to fuck like an alien and vibrate in a pussy and make you come a hundred times. What's up? We don't have our priorities straight. That's because we have this Protestant fucking guilt about sex. Get over it. We got to be more like the French, dude. Fuck somebody today. So Caitlyn Jenner's running for governor of California. I mean, thank God. Somebody's gonna swoop in. Isn't it great that a former triathlete as a man then put uh, murder uh, while she was driving, um, became a woman and a global icon, much like Elliot Page. Who's gonna be your vice president of, of uh, California? <laughs> Elliot Page? Yeah. I mean, talk about two people whose relevancy was slipping until they decided to change genders. Is fame such a drug that you will do anything? Or are they just really, has, has Bruce Jenner always felt like a woman? Because let me tell you something. If Bruce Jenner has always felt like a woman, he, that woman loved using his dick to create people and have straight sex. How many fucking Kardashians did he push out with his dick? I mean, for a guy who wanted to live his last quarter of his life as a woman, he loved fucking him. So that's what makes me suspicious that he's transitioned for the fame. Because it wasn't like he was running during the triathlete like RuPaul. <laughs> and they're going like, and then when people, it's not like when he transitioned, people were like, you know, makes sense. You know, it's almost like if Richard Simmons was finally like, just came out with long hair and was like, I know it's late, times have changed. I wanted to do this a long time ago. And people would be like, God bless Richard Simmons. He's living his true truth. We knew all along. But when one of the greatest athletes that's ever walked the face of the earth, who happened to also use his dick to make six kids and have girlfriends and continue to say that he still likes to fuck women even though he chopped his dick off, you're going to say maybe this has something to do with the fact that you killed somebody with your car? Because if Bruce Jenner disappears into the body of a woman, Caitlyn Jenner didn't kill somebody. Bruce did. And also, it brings his relevancy up to the forefront. I mean, now he's running for fucking governor. And by him, I mean her. I'm sorry, I was talking about Bruce when he was Bruce. So I was talking about the past. It's a character piece. It's called a firefighter who doesn't un identify fucking non-binary shit. <laughs> I'm a fucking firefighter. You can't blame me for being from Canarsie. All right, I'm from fucking Ridgewood, Queens. It's Rudy's fucking bakery. Shout out. Bagel boy. Bagel boy. Okay. Your small talk that you made with me today because you know who I am is not going to cut the fact that I got another day old bagel today. I want my bagels fucking fresh. I'm a New Yorker, okay? If you see this face come in, especially if I'm coming in with a half Jew, I know when the locks is fresh and I know when the bagel's not fresh, okay? Don't make me call my rabbi and we have a conversation with you. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it, bagel boy. Ladder 13, very funny. Ladder three dollar bill. So Caitlin and Ellie and Paige, her vice president. By the way, how much were you guys thinking about what was her name before? Ellen. How much were you thinking about Ellen Page before she transitioned into Elliot? Never. And boy, is she going to be a little guy? <laughs> Five one. Now, <laughs> here's the deal. This goes out to my good friend Joe Rogan as well. I I support your point about like women who transition into men, uh, I know, I'm sorry, men who transition into women fighting um, women um, in MMA. That's obvious. I think most people see that now. But if, Ellen, if Elliot Page, if Elliot Page wants to compete against the guys, <laughs> I am equally against that because the only sport she should be doing is midget tossing. That is a small guy. Imagine high-fiving that fucking kid. You walk in and he's just right up to your waist. Uh, he's, he just tries to reach up, but he can't. It's like a, trying to get, you know, it's like a baby trying to get to the cookie jar. And you're going, hey, cuz, let me just come down and give you five. What's up, dog? You, you listen to the new Nirvana album? He's like, yeah, you know, I listen to a pretty good boss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's man, sadly a page, you know, every once in a while, you know, his voice starts to sound a little like this, but you can tell he was still a girl. I mean, that is a fucking manly looking man right there. He should work security. Um, so Ellen Page is a guy, a new guy. He's one years old. <laughs> and 
and he is being interviewed by Oprah now. So uh, there he is, Ellen. Ellen, yeah, looks like he looks like an Irish kid who kind of grew up in Bay Ridge a little bit. Um, Ellen Page is now going to be interviewed by Oprah because, of course, now Ellen Page is a hero um, to the trans community. She and Oprah's going to interview her. Oprah had no interest in interviewing Ellen Page. So I'm just wondering if it has anything to do with it. And I support, I support the ticket of Caitlyn Jenner and Elliot Page for governor of, what is it, the second or third biggest economy? I mean, California is, has, bigger, has a bigger economy than most countries. And there she is, Miss America, um, Caitlyn Jenner. Um, and to borrow a phrase from Yanni Biden's, what is it? Tracy Morgan, I'll fuck, I'll fuck Caitlyn in the ass. I'll fuck an asshole. I saw that once at live at the stand and I was cracking up. He was like, I'll fuck, I'll fuck, I'll fuck Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> I'll fuck her ass. Uh, what, who is having that conversation? I don't know what you're talking about, Miller Jeff 99, but I hope you guys are talking to each other. Um, Elliot got to get on the, that DECA. Don't know what that means. Where's Derek at? Right here, brother. You obviously tuned in late. So hats off to Elliot Page. Elliot, what's up? Let's catch a game together, dog. <laughs> now, um, this is the country we live in. But Caitlyn Jenner has some steep competition for California governor. Do you guys know who that is? You know? Randy Quaid. Rand, the comedian Randy Quaid. <laughs> and I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this is like my stand-up coming true. It's, um, it's scary. You have to admit, our collapse is a lot more hilarious than Rome. Although I fear that the only thing that can keep us together is a dictator. And I feel like... That's what's going to happen next, and we deserve it. We need it, and hopefully at some point, that dictator will do like Nero did. Nero used to roam around with a posse in disguise and beat up homeless people, uh, and he was in his disguise because people would recognize him because he was the emperor of Rome, but just for shits and giggles, in between fucking a horse and marrying himself or marrying a guy and calling himself the woman, which he did, he would roam the streets of Rome late at night with a posse and beat up homeless people. We're about 10 years away from that. I think the Randy Quaid administration might usher in that era. <laughs> and it'll start in Venice with Randy Quaid just going around uh, breaking up 10 cities. <laughs> I mean, dude, have you seen Venice recently? Yeah, dude, Venice looks like the biggest camp. It looks like a Native American tribe has moved into the beach. It's just all tents and homeless people in Venice. So the comedian Randy Quaid, who um, is very hilarious and is known for uh, his vacation movies, which he's hysterical, um, he was on SNL for a little while as well, but he hasn't been seen in a while, and that is because he went to Georgetown Law, he has been in the Senate for 14 years, he understands common law well, he went to England, to Oxford, and studied John Locke. Um, common law, logic. He got very familiar with the works of Aristotle and has decided he wants to take this deep knowledge of justice and law and uh, really bring it to the California capital. <laughs> I'm calling my publicist and I'm saying, let's run for something because that is a good way to get into the news or maybe I should just start living as Maurice full-time. There is a guy who is fucking ripping off Maurice so bad right now, and he's getting very popular. People have been tagging me and putting me up. Throw this fucking golf guy up. His name is Manola something. Now, you tell me if he found Maurice's old YouTube video somewhere. Let's take a little peekaboo at um, something that um, has nothing to do or doesn't resemble Marisa at all. This just lets you know how impactful that character was that was created 10 years ago, which by the way, who many celebrities watched and contacted me about. Um, take a peek. You gotta, yeah, some golf kit. Manola something. See you in Norwalk tonight, brother, and you better be funny. I will be in Atlantic City, guys, May 7th and 8th. 
Get your fucking tickets. It's going to be wild. The great Sergio Chico is coming with me. Blizzy himself. So me and Sergio, um, May 7th and 8th, Atlantic City at the Celebrity Theater. Um, there's still some tickets. Um, get them at GiannisPappasComedy.com or Google them, dude, and buy the tickets. Drew made a flyer of it, and it, it looks like uh, it looks like it's a funeral flyer. It looks like it's a flyer telling you that your Jamaican neighbor's grandmother died, and can you come to the reception? There's going to be oxtail and beef patties. <laughs> Is why Sean still alive in 2021? Ethan L. Bergen. Yes. Why Sean is called Body Glove now, Sean. Yeah, hurt. Yeah, me. Yeah, me. So, can you guys pull this up or what? The CDC has finally released its statement that you can take your fucking mask off. Take your fucking mask off. Mars has oxygen. Take it off. But uh, in in typical bureaucratic fashion, they're not quite clear, right? So it's like, if you've been vaccinated, you can take off your mask if you're walking, jogging with family. And then there's one if you're in a small gathering with family members who are vaccinated or not vaccinated. Can we just say, guys, if you've been vaccinated, take your fucking mask off? How about that one? How about that one? What is What, what, what are we trying to warm us into? What is this, okay, you can take your mask off if you're walking alone or you're not in a big crowd? I thought the vaccine protects you from serious illness from COVID. Here he is. So just go to, yeah, go to the one and the third. This is, uh, now you tell me if this reminds you of a little someone. Don't even say his fucking name, this kid, but you can just, we'll watch on the podcast. Okay, for serious, right now, everyone needs to take it easy. Everyone just take it easy. Because I need to thank Lee from the Colorado Golf Blog for everything that is taking place right the heck now. And that's it. And for real, I need to thank my maniacs, all the new ones, all the new followings, all the new followers. Check it out, Mike. Strap it in. Strap it on. This is not the Magic Mountain roller coaster. This is the roller coaster that's going to go in places that they cannot put in the Magic Mountain. I'm going to make the magic, and you're going to be a part of it. And that's it. I want to thank everybody for following that shit, and everybody needs to remember for following that shit. the two things. You need to what? Waggle that shit. And then what is after that shit? You smack that shit. And Salma Hayek, that's it. I mean, <laughs> I mean. Catchphrase. Yeah, and he changed his photo from he used to. Now that all my fans are hitting his page, his photo had Dasit on his knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how did he think he was going to get away with it? I think he probably thought like it's ten years ago. He probably went to my page. I don't do it that much. I don't know, but he's getting popular. I mean, because some big golf blog posted it, so like his followers are now at eighty five thousand. He was at thirty five thousand. He's doing my character. <laughs> I mean, the bit works. It just lets you know it is a, a popular bit. It's so popular, Cardi B kind of adopted it. And she became one of the most famous people in the world. That, not really. But this guy is already popping off doing Maurice. So not only was she fucking popular and funny when she, she's so funny. She's funny when other people rip her off doing Al Pacino, a bad Al Pacino impersonation from Scarface. How bad do people want their entertainment right now? That's how you know we're at the end, dude. You know it's at the end when you turn on YouTube and it's fucking street pranks. The street pranks and prank comedy, what they do is satiate the fat, lazy, and stupid. And then you got the woke comedy that satiates the overeducated, spoiled, and stupid. This is the end, beautiful friend, and that's it. <laughs> He's not even doing it good. It's like a hack. Scarface and Marisa had a baby. Yeah, it's like if a bad, no, it's like a, if, it's like if, if a bad impressionist of Al Pacino and Scarface and a bad impression of Marisa had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. So what's coming now? Do you know what I'm, do you know what I'm trying to say? And that's it. I mean, it couldn't have been more of a knockoff of Marisa, but what can you do? He's a golf teacher. He's a golf teacher, but he's obviously created like a character, you yeah, know. He's not even on the tour or anything. Like a, no, he's just a golf uh, teacher who's doing a character who watched the video, obviously, and thought it was funny and just ran with it, dude. I mean, why not? And people are loving it. And it's what it is. And he, you know, he'd probably say, oh, no, I never, I never, uh, you know, I never came across that video. I just, 
<laughs> just a coincidence, you know? The same intonation and that's the same thing, you know? Like, I mean, same fucking thing. So did you guys know the Oscars happened? Yeah. Do you know, um, I found out that the Oscars happened after they happened. Yeah. <laughs> Someone was like, ah, so I heard, saw a tweet and I was like, oh shit. I couldn't believe it. I can't believe people are amazed that the ratings were so low. I, I can't believe the ratings were so high. <laughs> I didn't know that many people were tuning in. I mean, go figure. People don't want to watch um, multi-millionaires get on stage and um, harangue them on social justice. I, I Go figure, you know? Go figure. Talk about, you know what's funny? What's funny is these are the same people that will probably criticize Joe Rogan for his opinion on vaccinations because he's not an expert, but they will talk to you about climate change and uh, poverty and social justice. And what does their resume um, consist of? Oh, a Quentin Tarantino movie. You know, <laughs> one Quentin Tarantino movie and a few indies. I don't even know these. Yeah, dude, Drew, you're Gen X. You're like, where is Jake Paul? <laughs> I mean, who are these guys? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, look at that, dude. It looks like people at a trivia night in Brooklyn at a bar got dressed up for the night and handed each other gold statues. These people are out of touch and they need to get robbed. I can't wait for them to return from their parents' homes in Nantucket to their Brooklyn brownstones and find the windows smashed and their dog dead. <laughs> they're going like, let's go to the gate. And they're walking up Fifth Avenue and Third Street and somebody comes and says, yo, but butt posse is back, family. Run your shit and buy my weed. Send Yanni and Tim Dillon to the Oscar dogs. You're idiots, but they were in the Avengers, so obviously know what they're saying. Yanni, four eyes. Yes. I, I, I would watch the Oscars if De Niro and Pesci took their penis together. Uh, small penis Yanni. There you go. I thought I was watching BET because the Oscars were black at this year. See, that's what comment roulette's all about. Yeah, those are things I can't say, yeah. but I read it off there. <laughs> it doesn't count. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. All the guilty liberal people who pretend to love black entertainment maybe turned it on and thought it was the BET Awards. <laughs> 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 so they kept scrolling and went to Netflix and put on another episode of Friends and watched it again. Because all you have to do is tweet for the gram and then you can go sip champagne at Bourgeois Dois uh, Mimosa. Was a, a champagne the, at breakfast is called a mimosa. So the Oscars did happen. Uh, Giuliani's house is being raided because they're trying to um, they're trying to find uh, evidence of how his hair is liquid. <laughs> they're trying to find some sort of evidence about his business dealings in Ukraine when he was trying to procure evidence of, uh, concerning the Biden administration's ties to Ukraine through Hunter Biden. So I think that's why the feds are raiding his apartment. But look, if you're going to seize a guy's electrical devices, be a man and give him a chance to clear the fucking at least Google history, dog. I mean, he's not going to be doing any business with some Ukrainian oil tycoons on Google. So don't let his daughter see that he was looking at trans porn or midget porn or blacks on blondes. You know, it's just not anyone's business. Men should do that for each other. The way that journalists used to not report on JFK's hooker pool parties at the White House, Fed agents should come in and be like, dog, we're seizing your electronics. We're going to go in the other room. We're going to give you three minutes. <laughs> okay? Three minutes notice, head start, to just wipe that shit clean. Okay? And Rudy will say, I appreciate that. I really appreciate that because... My daughter doesn't need to know what I was saying. I guess it's just, I think if you looked at Rudy Giuliani, if you look at Rudy Giuliani's fucking sucks it's half. If you look at Rudy Giuliani's computer, I think what he jerks off to is just pictures of Donald Trump. It would just be different pics of Donald Trump's hair blowing in the wind. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, th he probably sweats a lot when he fucks. Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. Uh, tough mayor. So Arizona has banned 
abortion for genetic disorders. Now let's get this right. What's exactly the law? This is what's going on now, which is so crazy, is that people are fleeing states and relocating to other states, not for jobs, because there aren't many left, but for like principles and political reasons. You run into someone in Texas, you're going, what are you doing here? And they're like, I'm escaping taxes from New York. You go to New Hampshire and you're like, what are you doing here? They're like, I wanted to get rid of my malformed baby and I couldn't in Arizona. So I had to move here to kill this baby. <laughs> I mean, there's certain states laws popping up everywhere. You'll meet somebody in Wyoming. They'll be like, what are you doing here? And it's like, I just wanted to vote without having to have my asshole checked for drugs in Georgia. So to be able to participate in the democracy, I had to relocate. What's happening now is a real fracturing of United States as we've become so politically divided, as I've mentioned, because the fringes have taken over the conversation for both parties, um, especially the left, um, has been hijacked by the crazy woke and far left, obviously, um, that now the, the states have become almost like countries and their laws are getting so different. Like pretty soon, one of these states is gonna just be like, their currency is gonna be Bitcoin. And then the next thing you know, they're going to be like, why are we part of this economy? We have our own currency. Like we're headed closer and closer to becoming more like in the EU than we are the United States of America because our culture is so different. You got people on the coast going, there's 157 genders and trans women are women. And then you got other people going like, I respect the rights of all trans women, but they're not women, they're trans women. Otherwise, why are you calling them trans women? Uh, if you're saying gender is different from sex, why are you bothering to change your sex? And then you got other people going like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. And you're going like, hey, biology, shut the fuck up, turf. Okay? J.J. Cockin Fallen Rollins is a bitch. J.K. fucking Rollins is Hitler. Shut your fucking mouth, you bitch. Don't eat meat. You don't fucking care about cows. They get feelings. And then other people are going like, fuck it, I don't wear no face diaper, motherfucker, rah. <laughs> so really people are relocating based on state laws that are popping up. Um, pretty soon, it's like, it's going to be foul. There's going to be like, pretty soon Arizona is probably going to have a law where like you, to go anywhere, you got to show that you're a citizen. I mean, it's going to get nasty. And because these states, everyone's losing faith in the federal government because they're not talking about specifics and how they're going to stimulate the economy. They're just taxing everybody and giving speeches about third gender bathrooms, you know, which concerns about, you know, no disrespect, but it concerns about 0.007% of the population that seems to be dominating. The it's the economy, stupid. How are you going to get people money? The only one talking about that is fucking the Chinese Santa. Andrew Yang is saying, I'm going to hand out money. Let's vote for him and see what happens. At least he's not talking about transgender bathrooms for 45 fucking minutes. Uh, uh, by the way, people say that I look like um, if Shrek came to life and lost a couple pounds. You don't see it or no? I don't see it. No, Jesse thinks I'm almost Stamos. It's like the, the smartest kid in special ed. There you go. Nate Bargatze used to like the, look like the handsomest kid with Down syndrome you've ever seen. <laughs> when he had that haircut that went down, that's what I used to say about him. Very funny comedian, one of the funniest, Nate Bargatze. He's selling out. He doesn't need the promotion. Um, guys, uh, my uh, episode of Tiger Belly with Bobby Lee's up. Had a great time. Uh, Segura and Christina P. Your mama's house is up. Um, uh, whatchamacallit, Whiskey Gingers should be dropping. Uh, should be out by now with the great Cheeto Santino. Um, go check out Jeremiah Watkins. We had a great time doing a lot of character pieces. Uh, Adam Ray, I did. Uh, I'm a little podcast whore because it's an arms race. <laughs> <laughs> also, obviously, uh, Lex Friedman, Tim Dillon's episode and his Patreon episode, we did too. And uh, if you haven't listened to my Joe Rogan, go listen to that. Um, watch my special, tell your friends about my special. It's still up there. Uh, I'm also selling it to a production company that's going to get it up on Amazon um, because it's underappreciated and it's one of the best specials ever done. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's because people like to eat shit, okay? My special's not fucking Chipotle. My special is fucking Cheesecake Factory.
<laughs> so um, as we uh, while we wait for this um, as we wait for this body cam footage to drop out of North Carolina, who's excited to see this movie? Are you guys excited to see the movie of the Andrew Brown Jr. murder? Um, the autopsy that was held privately said that he was shot four times in the arm, and then there was a shot in the back of the head. So North Carolina um, is bracing for riots as we are waiting for the body cam footage to drop, son. Um, this is one of the most highly anticipated movies since Avengers. I mean, America is really in a sad state. The funny thing, Tim Dillon said this to me. He goes, the, the crazy thing is, I think the only thing keeping us together was Donald Trump. <laughs> Things are worse now. Because at least everyone was focused on Donald Trump, whether you loved him or you hated him. And everyone either loved him or hated him. Um, he gave us something to focus on. He, he united people in hate and love. Now it's being exposed. Now we're being exposed for how splintered and fractured and how much of a third world country we're becoming. I mean, when Texas gets fucking, Texas can't function when it snows and there's people without power for like weeks or was it days? God, people must think I do cocaine because I have allergies. I don't do cocaine. I never have. Does anyone have any more cocaine? Um... And then, uh, and then things like this, where we're on, I mean, these things are not going to quit. We need some sort of police reform and hopefully people start coming together and stop focusing so much on the race of the people. You know who I feel really bad for in unarmed police shootings, Hispanics and others. Nobody on the right or left gives a shit about those statistics. Everyone's just arguing about what percentage gets killed more. And oh, the right goes, oh, they kill more white people. What about Hispanics? Who by my measurement are, it depends. Because Hispanics can be black or they can be white. Okay. If you're a uh, Hispanic and you look like, um, who's the, uh, uh, Rallis Chapman, you're, I would say you're black, right? Like a lot of Dominicans, even though they're Hispanic, I say that's, he's black. But if you look like Canelo, you're a donk. Okay, that's the Giannis Pappas test. Okay, that's why I want Sean King to grow out his hair. And if it moves when the wind blows, okay, and you could play a role in the musical Grease with me, then you're not black. So that just shows you how much the media keeps pumping the killings of unarmed people who are either black first, white second. You don't hear anything about Hispanic killings. Hispanic killings are more than black killings, right? And a little less than white killings. And then there's others. There's a bunch who are others. I don't know, that some Hawaiian dude gets killed. I mean, what's an other? What is an other? They can't figure out what he is? Nobody cares about these others getting killed. There's no marches saying others' lives matter. <laughs> no, but why wouldn't they say South Asian? What's others? I, are they killing so few Indian kids because they just don't shoot up tech companies? And doctor's offices or 7-Elevens. <laughs> but dude, others' lives matters. I mean, you know, nobody's talking about these others. God, this podcast is good. We're rolling. It's called good content. You know what good content's called? Good yon tent. This is yon tent I'm giving you. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Isn't it funny how things come? This is basically what I used to do at Bar 4. Things come full circle. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days for the additional episode every Wednesday. $5 DVD. <laughs> it costs you $5. Okay, so if you ever sat in a Blimpies and bought a Jackie Chan movie that was videotaped at a movie theater for $5, you can afford four bonus episodes a month. Four additional hours of Yan Ten for $5 a month, cuz. Yeah, yeah, cuz would you pay five dollars? How much is five dollars? What can you get for five dollars, Drew, in Jersey? A hot dog? A hand job? What can you get for five dollars? And you're basically buying me a slice a foot, of the coke. A footlong. You can get it's basically subway, subway footlong. A subway footlong, Drew. Drew underscore films on Instagram. Yes, sir. And go watch the other episode I plugged it hard. But yo, what were you thinking, my guy? <laughs> but as soon as we get big enough, you know, we'll pry Drew away from uh from catching pedophiles. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, it's just a hobby. 
No, it's good. It's good. It's good work you're doing out there, and you're protecting Jersey City from uh, from predators. Tell girls I'm a vigilante. You are a vigilante. You are a vigilante. And Jesse Scatoro, all one word. Um, Cause you, are you? What are we gonna sell? Cause we gotta sell your art. Whatever you want. Why don't we sell the baby Socrates for five? What if I sold the history hyenas tile sign for thirty thousand dollars? The history hyenas sign is on sale right now for thirty k. With the Tim Dillon episode, that'll cost you one million dollars. And if you want to buy a Baby Socrates original statue, fifteen thousand dollars. Why did I get in fucking Karate Kid? Um, so patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Go join to access an additional episode. If you're if you watch on Sunday or Monday and you're like, yo, I need some more yon tent, son. Family, cuz I need some more yon tent, boom. Wednesdays. Another episode drops to get you through the week. A little heroin squeeze. I love you guys. Um, um, stay Greek, and uh, I'll see you next week. Now let's read some fucking new Patreon names. All right, guys, as always, I'm going to read the Patreon names. The newest members of the Patreon just want to welcome you. Uh, you're, you're now a long hauler. You're in it for the long haul, but no COVID symptoms, only here for the yon tent. So here we go. First... But not least, we got Kirk. Welcome. D.W. Young. What are you going to write a poem? We get it. Dr. Simon's abortion clinic and pizzeria. No fetus can beat us. Your loss is our sauce. I think that might be my new favorite of all time, including hyenas. I'll read it again. What do you guys feel about that? Dr. Simon's abortion clinic and pizzeria. So right there, I'm going, you got me. And I thought it was going to go bad, but then his slogan is, no fetus can beat us, your loss is our sauce. Oh, that's fucking horrible. It's horrible, <laughs> but it's very funny. Hall of Fame, welcome, Dr. Simon, and I'm a fan of your work. Love that Pete's. Zagat rated. Andrew Warren, welcome, here for the on tent. Keenan Pop-Tarts. <laughs> See, I like a good chicken figure like that. Yeah. You call yourself Keenan Pop Tarts. I like it. And Keenan, what's up? Yeah, you know I mean, there's no white kid named Keenan. Now you could be a white name named Nigel. You could be a white dude named Nigel because of the British shit. But you will never find a white Keenan. This is a black kid right there. And then we got Lil Lil Pebbles, <laughs> <laughs> B Benjamin, Adam G. Welcome, Chase Red Baron, Oscar Booman Star, uh, Eli Snyder. Welcome to the welcome to the tribe, Eli. Then we got Stuart Jenkins. Yeah, hurt. Garlic toothpaste. Welcome. <laughs> Shakar Singh. Welcome, Dr. Uh, Singh. Then we got Jason. <laughs> David. Some dumb bish. That's a goodie. She spelt it uh, some dumb bish. So welcome, girl. Jeremy Lachance. Jeremy Lachance. Sounds like a bad guy in an 80s movie. Um, then I am a Brazilian kid. My cousin can be Ronaldo or Francis Ngannou. <laughs> then uh, next we have Karate It Part 2, The Revenge of Yanni's Tongue, almost starting Yanis Pappas. So you meant to say almost starring Yanis Pappas. That's uh, from Tiger Belly episode. That was a blast. My Tiger Belly episode with Bobby's also up. Uh, Danny, welcome. Maverick, welcome. Sydney McGlynn, Crabtree, Welcome. Uh, Yanni procreated his way into the Greek culture because Papu is pushing up olive trees Esposito. <laughs> Good one. I'd say he's second in the race behind my favorite pizzeria. <laughs> then we got Adam Cristalini. Ah, uh, Cristalini, his name. So Adam means his mom's a Jew. He's, he's like you, cuz. Half Jew, half Italian. Adam Cristalini. How you doing, Cristalini Cement, Colin? <laughs> then we got uh, Titty Milk, spelt T-I-D-D-I-E, so Titty Milk. <laughs> then uh, Sarah Anderson. And that's it, Jess? You go to page one. Oh, page one. Um, these are goodies. Yeah, New good. members of the Patreon at patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Obviously, do a funny name. Make it fun. Then we got uh, Vito Pipoli. Vito Pipoli. Vito, Vito Pipoli. I mean, we got some whore, hardcore sauce monkeys. Then we got David, welcome. Jeff the Greek, who should be named Malik Williams. <laughs> Very good. Then we got Ben Sago, Gio Pavlov, 
Timothy Schrader, first Russian kid, Pavlov. Then we got Danny Pena. Que pasa, mi gente? Then we got Tanner. Then we got Old McTronald. <laughs> Then we got Michael Welcome, James Smith Stewart. Then we got Dink Grabber. Then we got Bill. Uh, then we have a uh, Salvadorian Swedish fish that gets consent when I pitch a tent. <laughs> then we got uh, Tree Meister. Tree Meister. Then we got Veronica. Ooh, this girl makes sure to, this girl has to have the sauce really nice with the garlic sliced really thin. Veronica Capaletti. Did you go to Edward R. Morrow and did I finger pop you outside St. Saviors? And then we got the underscore Jews. Then we have J.R. Hill, Callum Lindsay. Uh, then we have the Canadian sauce monkey. Then Father B passed on me. So now I have self-esteem issues. Then we have a radical anti-fundamentalist. Then we have Ivan. I've always been a five foot ten squeak piece, but saying I'm six foot Wayne. <laughs> Very good. Then we got, I like that one. Then we got Eiffel Towered by Yanni Long Days and Chrissy Chaos. That's what, you know, that's what, it's a good place to be. Then we got Mano Namin Ginobili. <laughs> Very funny. Then we got Walker Curtis. Gotta be a black kid. Yeah, me. Yeah, hurt. And then we got Spencer Bagley. Unfortunately, in high school, they pronounced it Fagley. <laughs> I mean, coming with the heat, this list. And now we got Colin. I may be a greasy heterosexual potato monkey, but make no mistake, I'd let AOC peg me Anthony. <laughs> and then we got, I came through Yanni's back door in a different way. Okay, I left the key for you. Then we got Elliot Vega, Adam, welcome. Birdo in the streets, Frank in the sheets, big toe for a piece, Brisenio. Then we got Kelsey, and then we have a fictitious, non-womanizing Dominican kid. I mean, these are great. That one got Jesse good. Then we got AR, my eyes are close together too, but I'm not a Wikipedia slut like you, Brian. Then we got Brendan, the big red bush brown. <laughs> then we got Michael Billis, Akash, the 69th flagrant. Then we got Brooks and Eric B and Rockham. Fresh Doug, uh, fresh young dude, AKA Proud Boys, find your bleach. Then we got Tara. Welcome, Tara. Then we got Martin Burke, Sam Parsons, Mark Verduchu, uh, Duncan <laughs> McCalla, Zach Rojas, Trent. Welcome, Michael Kaufman. Thank you. Chet Hanks, Left Nut. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Hanks, Left Nut is uh, last but not least. Thank you guys for joining. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days, all one word. Join. And we're also brought to you because, you know, Yanni Long Days always supports small business sponsors. There's five slots. They're all filled. If one drops off, get in there. I will always do this to support small business because y'all deserve it. It works out. I mean, I, you're robbing me basically for these prices and Jesse hates it. But what can you do? I'm a man of the people. Am I not the prince of the people? I can't wait till I become popular so I can murder homeless people. Because um, that's what happens with power. People just lose it. We're brought to you, as always, um, by uh, Max, Mr. Good Guy Long. This guy fucking actually got a client already from here. Uh, Good Guy's Refrigeration. You know what the deal is. He's got two locations. Uh, one in Palm Beach. So if you happen to be a member of the tribe and your fridge isn't working, or if you're Airbnb, or being, or Airbnb being from somebody who's a member of the tribe, okay, at Elizabeth Taylor's old house in Palm Beach, Get your fucking refrigerator fixed with the one and only Max, Mr. Good Guy Long. Good Guy Refrigeration. Go to goodguyrefrigeration.com. The guy works out of his truck. He'll come right to your house and crack open and clean out any fucking problem you have over there. And we are brought to you by one of my favorite restaurants. No bullshit. I'm happy when this guy came to us and said, cuz, let me get in there. And you know he said, cuz, let me get in there because his name is Joseph DeMonte. He said, ma, let me borrow little money, I'm going to open a fucking spot. I'm going to open a fat fucking spot. I haven't been paying rent four years because I've been living in your basement. It's going to be called fucking Blue Agave. So Blue Agave on 3rd Avenue in Bay Ridge, which I still am part of the time. Um, I'm, I, I basically live in Bay Ridge still. I'm here. I'm back and forth between here and New Hampshire or wherever the fuck you think I live. And um, so Blue Agave is my spot. I will be going there this summer with my wife and my baby dog. And I've been there a million times, sat out in the patio. And if you don't think I go there and get a fucking mojito and some quesadillas, you got another thing coming. A guy like Joseph, fuck, Joseph DeMonte, he knows food. 
So go, Blue Agave, follow them on the Instagram, Blue Agave. Tell them Long Day sent you, and when you show up there, Joseph, you better be in there. Joe, be in there to fucking receive my fans into your fucking establishment and give them a fucking one free fucking mojito on the house. You didn't tell me that, but I'm saying they expect one free mojito on the house. And we are brought to you again by Jared Z from the Stink Box, Tallahassee, looking for that Harry Yan EP to make me a cuzzy. I always forget the cuzzy part because I love this guy's business, all right? This is an ex-Catholic kid. He's a good kid. Uh, he's now a born-again Christian. So his mother says he's handsome. So if you are a Christian, you want to support a born again what do you call those for short? born Um uh, No, he says, a Jew with no fumes and bad back, but my ex-Catholic, now born-again mother. Oh, he's a Jew. Um, so good Jewish kid. Um, his ex-Catholic, now born-again mother says he's handsome. So his mother's the one who's switching religions. She's a free agent. What a signing for the born-again Christians that they scored her. Next Catholic, fucking, that makes them happy. We talked about born-again Catholics on born-again Christians on this episode. Guys, you know what it is. ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. Okay, they're based in Tallahassee, Florida, brother. And uh, they're soon to be in San Antonio, Texas. So this guy's picking real top-of-the-line cities to, to do his business out of. Um, but uh, you know what it is. Um, they will move your car. People are moving now. They're moving out of states. Um, I, I assume they do those two cities. Um, so if you're moving, what is it, to those cities or from those cities? I don't know. Hit them up. ExclusiveAutoShipping.com, Tallahassee, Florida, San Antonio, Texas. Hit them up. Um, I, I assume they'll move your fucking car no matter where you live. I don't know. I don't know how that works. But they will move your shit. If you're moving and you need your car moved, call my boy Jared. He's a good Jewish kid with a born-again mom. And we're brought to you um, by this good kid, Rob's Mental Play, uh, Rob's Mental Playground. So it's uh, robsmentalplayground.com. He actually sold a painting already to a uh, Long Days fan. So go check out his art at robsmentalplayground.com. And you can follow Rob on Instagram or all your favorite social media platforms. Das was the dollars. So uh, robsmentalplayground.com. Yeah!